Hello, I'm Archie Luxury and welcome to the program, fuckers. And today I'd like to talk about the disrespectful American fuckers. And uh, this is, this is a, a piece of modern history. And what it is, it's a Boeing 747, which was actually... Now, there's a bit of conflicting reports here. I've done a bit of research. The first... Um, 747 to enter service. Pan Am was the company which took delivery of the first 747 for commercial flight. The first 747 was used by Boeing for testing. So the second one, which uh, was uh, opened by uh, Mrs. Nixon, um, I believe it was actually damaged in an air accident but uh, this particular this particular aircraft I believe was the second delivery it was the second delivered aircraft and it's quite a fucking sad story I mean you Americans you have such wonderful things the jet age the 747 probably the greatest commercial aircraft of all time I mean the Concorde was fast and it was good and, you know, but it wasn't really a commercial success. The Boeing 747 revolutionized cheap international travel. And uh, it's probably the most successful commercial jet of all time. And um, I just can't believe the disrespect you Americans have for such a wonderful aircraft. And uh, the tail of this aircraft, this was, was one of the early Boeing 747s, 747-100s. And it was basically when Pan Am went bankrupt in 1991, this aircraft lingered on eventually to be sold for about a million dollars to a Korean couple, a South Korean couple, who cut the aircraft up and turned it into a noodle restaurant. And uh, the restaurant existed until about 2005 when it failed. And then the, the aircraft in 2009, 2010 was scrapped. And uh, I just can't believe it. This is a piece of American history. It's an early 747. And uh, you Americans just don't give a shit about the history. Oh, yeah, sell it to some crazy fucking Korean couple who want to turn it into a fucking noodle restaurant. I mean, have you ever heard of anything? I mean, this is, this is a piece of American glory. And um, the, the amazing thing is, is that, I mean, fuck, with Obama in the White House, these glory days of the, the 60s, when you put a man on the moon, are long gone. America's glory day is long gone, and you forgot to keep the fucking souvenirs. I mean, this is so fucking sad. It is so sad. And uh, I, I, don't, I don't know what to say. It's just really, really sad. And uh, the, the aircraft's registration was uh, N747PA. And it was a Boeing 747-121. And uh, it actually was involved in an air accident where it, um, they fucked off. They, 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 they fucked up the, uh, the, the takeoff. And uh, two passengers were seriously hurt. And uh, subsequently, after this air accident, it was returned to service. This was N747PA and, was, and it was re-registered and leased to Air Zayar. And that was from 1973 to 1975. When, uh, then it was returned to Pan Am and it was renamed Clipper Sea Lark and then Clipper John T. Tripe. John T. Tripe was the, the founder of Pan Am in honor of the airline's founder. The aircraft remained with Pan Am until the airline ceased operation in 1991. Then it was transferred to an Argentinian airline. Then 
it was transferred to a Nigerian airline and it was finally scrapped in 1999 and uh, the airline was then sold to a uh, became a restaurant in South Korea and the the aircraft was finally scrapped in 2010 and uh, what a fucking shame that's that's all I can really say there what a fucking shame this is a this is a piece of 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 American pride I mean this is a proud 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 type of of thing you guys should be so proud and uh, I'm getting some conflicting reports there's reports that say it was the second aircraft built by Boeing but I think it was the second aircraft delivered to Pan Am the first was the aircraft for testing which Boeing retained and the the actual first aircraft I've done a bit of a um, I've done a bit of research on it and uh, the first aircraft was and this is the Pan Am aircraft Clipper Victor um, which was N736PA and that's the one that um, was actually launched by Ms. Nixon, Mrs. Nixon and uh, I just gotta say that aircraft Clipper Young America Clipper Victor because it, it was renamed later actually um, it crashed in 1977 when it collided with the KLM 747 uh, that was a huge disaster so the, the the interesting thing is the interesting thing is is that okay so the first the first aircraft that Pan Am built that was, that was a testing aircraft the first one released to um, Pan Am was involved in an accident so the next aircraft this is this is the third aircraft built the second aircraft delivered to Pan Am sold off for a fucking noodle restaurant I mean you fucking Americans I just can't believe it this is a this is a piece of American pride this was when this is your peak and you was too fucking stupid to realize this and keep the souvenirs I mean fuck fuck I don't know what to say to you guys I mean Obama's at the wheel now those glory days I'm afraid they ain't fucking there anymore they ain't there anymore and um, you 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 people forgot to keep the souvenirs and uh, it's just so so sad I don't know what to say it's just fucking fucking sad and you Americans should bow your head in shame. Pan Am paging Miss Fulton, would you please call at the Pan American ticket counter on the departures level? Miss Fulton. When you fly out into the world with Pan Am, you're not going with an airline that knows one country best and visits the rest. You're flying with the world airline. In over 40 years, we've got to know the world pretty well. You'll find local Pan Am people in 207 offices linking 84 countries, waiting to do all the little things that leave you free to do yours. It's all in the price of your ticket. Carolyn 
dust-off report that the last 747 was, fittingly, also Pan Am's first. You'd think they were saying goodbye to an old friend, but for many, that's exactly what this airplane is. It was the first commercial 747 to come off Boeing's assembly line, and it's Pan American Airlines' last 747 flight. That's why it's near and dear to so many. Everybody here put a lot of sweat into this airplane, and to come to an end like this, it's hard, very hard. This is what it was all about, getting it into the air and keeping it going and making a name for Pan American and taking people wherever they wanted to go and the safety factor involved. And this airplane seen better days and so did the company and now this is the end. And you know, it's, it's just like breaking up a marriage after 50 years. It's not an easy thing to let go of. Former Pan Am workers and the few who still work for the bankrupt airline came to bid farewell to not only their first 747, but also an era. It was an era that began in 1970 when Pan Am's legendary founder, Juan Tripp, gave Boeing its first contract for 747s. Pan Am employees will tell you that was the beginning of truly modern aviation. Between him and the person who was in charge, Mel Allen, who was in charge of Boeing at the time, this is pretty much how everything started, all the aviation we have today, all started from this. Those were Pan Am's glory days, but an oil embargo, deregulation, and a recession crippled the airline. Pan Am filed for bankruptcy last year and was grounded in December. For workers who had been with the airline for more than 30 years, this was a fitting tribute to not only an airplane that circled the globe 1,800 times, but to the Pan American family. My husband was 36 with the company. We met on the airplane. Uh, our son became a, became a pilot with Pan Am, and he met his wife on the airplane. So it's, it's a sad time. She's headed to Southern California, where she may fly again, perhaps as a freighter. But this is the last 747 you'll see with Pan Am's name on it. At Kennedy Airport, Carolyn Gus.